so usually when I make videos, I have like a notes thing and it says all the stuff that I'm going to talk about. And then I start the video and it always goes into something else. So this was originally going to be about some shooting in the field, some metering with my spot meter, and then talking about some wide angle lenses. But I've already sold those lenses. I no longer have them. And I was doing some darkroom printing and I messed up the darkroom prints because I don't really know what I'm doing in the darkroom. And then I thought to myself, why am I making a video about talking about doing darkroom stuff when I don't know what I'm doing? So you guys should just check out like someone like Matt Brosh or Dist Photo if you want to learn darkroom, darkroom printing. But like I said, I bought some wide angle lenses. I thought that I wanted something. I went through this... Um, period where I was wanting something new. For a while now, I've only had the 4x5 and a 135 millimeter lens. I've only been making work on that. I've made some of my best work with it. But like I said, going through this period, I'm like, I want something new. So I wanted a wide angle lens. I bought a 90 millimeter Nikon uh, F8. And I use an f3.5 lens, so when I put that sucker on, it was like looking through, uh, it was just so dark. I couldn't see anything. It was unbelievable. Um, I put my dark cloth on, still couldn't see anything. Outside, it was a little bit better, but I tested it in my dining room. It was shocking how dark it was. So I thought, this probably isn't going to go well, but I took it out in the field. I made some work with it. And I was pleased with the photos. They turned out pretty nice. Then I got my head and I was like, well, maybe um, the, the, the F8 is this much. Maybe I can get the F4.5. It's a little bit more money. It's obsessively large, but I'll be able to see. So I got that, tested it out in the same dining room, and I could actually see some things. So that was nice. Took that one out and it was so comically large and heavy and just weird to use compared to my 135 that I was like, I don't like this. So I already sold both of them. And I've just realized that I like to keep my gear minimal. I don't like to have a lot of options and I feel like I make my best work when I just have one thing to make work with. And in regards to uh, the potential, the lens that I have now, I feel like I haven't reached the full potential of it. I'm still learning the ins and outs of everything. I'm still learning how to make work with 4x5. So I'm going to stick with that for a while and um, just see well, what I can make with that and see how long I can go with just the one lens. The other thing I want to talk about was the past three assignments that I've done for the New York Times. So the first one that I got was this story about weapons production in uh, St. Louis at the Boeing facility. It was interesting going into it because they told me right off, like right out of the gate, um, we're going to have to look at every photo for security purposes. So I would not be able to shoot film and I would only have like an hour and a half in, in order to get all the images. So the brief was I need to needed to get just production photos and maybe some photos of people working. So I thought there was going to be one person following me around the whole time, but it ended up being six people. And one person was like the main guy and he was, uh, I would have to ask him, Hey, is this okay to photograph? And he'd be like, that is okay to photograph. And I would say, hey, is this okay to photograph? And he's like, no, that has um, some serial numbers on it. And people might be able to zoom in and figure out what it is. So I was like, all right, won't photograph that. But went around, asked, took, asked, took. Took like 90 photos, I think. And a technical side of things. I did end up renting a 24 millimeter to 70 millimeter Sigma lens. Usually I use a 35 millimeter, but I didn't want to be reaching into my bag, getting other lenses, 
when I could just rent a zoom lens and have 24 to 70 right there. So that was nice. Um, I feel like I mostly used around the 24 millimeter to 30 millimeter, um, trying to stay a little bit wide, but on the times when I had to be behind a barrier and there was a person working, I would zoom into 70 millimeter and try to photograph them that way. But at the end of that, like I said, I took 90 photos. He looked at all of them again, was zooming in on my camera and we ended up deleting around four or five. And those are the ones that I sent off. And that ended up being published in the paper. I don't have a physical copy of that, but I'll link the digital copy down below. Very cool to see that in there. And it turned out to be a pretty cool and interesting assignment. The next one that I had to do was a portrait, a singular portrait for a story in the Sunday paper called Witness. And that's basically just um, spotlighting one person who's part of a bigger issue. And this issue was the government shutdown. And this particular woman was part of the 2018 government shutdown. And at the time when this article came out, this was when the government was in talks about shutting down, but it ended up not shutting down. So this article was pretty moot, but that's all right. She was in Kansas City. I'm in St. Louis. That's around four hours away. And it was originally supposed to be in the morning. There was a scheduling conflict. Then it was going to be in the afternoon. There was a scheduling conflict. Then it was going to be Thursday at noon. And I would have to send off the images Thursday night. So I wanted to shoot film. If it was going to be one singular portrait, I wanted it to be in the medium that I use the most. But that means that I would have to process everything at home and then send it out that night after driving back four hours. So I'd leave at like eight in the morning, get there, make a photo, make a couple photos, drive back, process, deliver, yada, yada, yada. The mistake that I made multiple mistakes were made, but the first one was not prioritizing digital. I prioritized film. I got my film set up, my film shot good and ready and as good as I could get in the conditions. It was super harsh light. We tried to find some shade and then I would take some digital backups and that's where I messed up because with processing film and doing it yourself, there's always room for mistakes. And that was the second mistake that I made, doing everything at home, processing, not having enough time to dry, and then scanning. It was just ripe for problems. So the portrait wasn't terrible. They did end up, end up running it in the paper, and I did have it on my wall, but the tape fell down. It was an interesting assignment. I did enjoy traveling. I like going to Kansas City, but I was only there for 30 minutes, so I couldn't really see anything. But all of these things that you do, it's all about learning and having that in the back of your head the next time that you go out. Then the last one that I did was a very interesting assignment about making wine at home. And uh, going into this one, I was like, I'm going to shoot all digital, focus on digital, and I'm going to do it with a little bit of flash as well. And I'm going to focus on getting close to stuff and getting minute, small details with everything. And I think I did that with a lot of these photos. It was uh, cool to meet Lisa, who was the winemaker who made wine in her basement. We went through the destimming process. We went through um, like pouring the grapes out into this vat. Then we went through the whole bottling process, corking, and then testing for pH and alcohol content. But it was fun to get in there, use some flash, get a little bit more dynamic photos than I'm used to. And then at the end, I did t end up taking some four by five portraits as well, which I think turned out okay. Um, moving forward though, if time allows, 
I still want to shoot four by five for these assignments, but I will not do any color processing at home. Um, I was talking with my buddy Carl and he sends his film to picture house, the small dark room up in New York. They have $3 processing, which is unbelievable for four by five C41. So I just sent 16 sheets off to them. I'm excited to get those back and scan here at home. And also I'm just going to focus on getting better at shooting digital. And that's kind of a backwards thing. You should be good at digital and then move to something like four by five. But I didn't shoot much, much digital when I started out, kind of went straight into film. So now I'm working my way back and learning how to utilize digital because it's a completely different medium. And there's just a lot of room for messing with things, I guess. The raw files are huge. You can change a lot after the fact. You can crop in. It's just a totally different experience compared to shooting film. And I wanna use that to my advantage when doing assignments like this. And who knows, maybe in the future I might step up and finally be a big boy and, and get a GFX or something of that nature. But right now I'm happy with my setup. The Lumix S1 is fine. The autofocus is fine, but yada, yada, yada. But uh, yeah, I didn't want to make this video about sponsors or commercials or ads or anything like that. Um, I did have a sponsor lined up that was different from my usual sponsor, but I used the product. It was a photo editing software product, but I used it, it wasn't that great, so I'm not gonna talk about it to you guys, but just wanna be upfront with you guys. I still get a ton of emails about trash products and shitty consumerist bullshit, and I don't want to put that on you guys. There's enough ads out there, for God's sake, so if you wanna support me as a broke four by five film shooter there's a give thanks button on youtube that money goes to me you can give thanks that way um yeah if you have any questions about assignment work if you have any questions about the wide angle lenses let me know message me leave a comment like the video i don't know thumbs up subscribe do whatever you need to do see ya bye peace Okay. All right, so I just wanted to make this video um